we are exceptionally lucky to have in our community people who have given long periods of time and service to help you, our young people, and to support our parents and the rest of our community. Two of such people retire this Christmas, and I want to give special thanks to them. Firstly, I would actually like to introduce Mr McKillop, who is going to say farewell to Mr McLaughlin, who has been with us for some 19 years, and who many of you will know not just as an exceptional teacher of RE, but as a leader of retreats, and especially of Kairos. He has given so much to our community, and we want to thank him here. I have known Mr McLaughlin since I first came to the college in 2004. Back then I was young, naive, with a full head of hair. Now, just naive, I would like to take a brief moment to share some thoughts regarding Mr McLaughlin at this time of celebration and Thanksgiving. When Mr McLaughlin joined the school community in 2001, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone had just been released in the cinema, The Lord of the Rings was quick to follow, and nearly everyone was watching 24 with Kiefer Sutherland on TV. Father Adrian Porter was the headmaster at the time, and instead of heads of year, the college had housemasters for the four school houses. Back then, iPads were things you put on your eyes if they were sore, and mobile phones were used for just talking to people. But Mr McLaughlin didn't fancy technology, or didn't need rather fancy technology to teach. He brought a new energy and a new dynamism to the RE department, with a large bank of entertaining and informative stories that would engage and inspire young people for many, many years. Who needs Alexa or Siri when Mr McLaughlin is your personal go-to holy search engine? His level of RE and theology knowledge is quite astounding. I remember discovering not long after I joined the school that Mr McLaughlin had quite a sense of humour. He decided on April the 1st, 2005, that it would be very much appropriate and good form to phone up Mrs McWilliams, the head of RE at the time, to pretending to be a parent, complaining about how Mr McLaughlin was an awful teacher who was spreading heresy. To give Mrs McWilliams her due, she strenuously defended Mr McLaughlin's teaching to Mr McLaughlin. Upon discovering the truth, not one to be outdone by Mr McLaughlin, Mrs McWilliams decided to borrow the skeleton from the biology department, sit it in his classroom chair, dress it in Mr McLaughlin's finest blue suit jacket, carefully position his glasses and a marking pen in the skeletal grasp, and leave the classroom for the remains to be discovered. I remember sitting in my own classroom, waiting with bated breath for the big reveal. I wasn't disappointed when Mr McLaughlin, without glasses, fumbled for his keys, opened the door and entered the scene of the crime. To this day, never have I heard the second half of the Hail Mary uttered at such a volume or in such terror. However, in all seriousness, Mr McLaughlin has been responsible for helping to sustain, promote and enhance the faith experience of many, many pupils in St Aloysius College over the last 19 years. Every Tuesday and Friday, Mr McLaughlin has been the person who has opened up and closed the St Aloysius Church for our assemblies. He has personally arranged readers and prayers twice a week and as liturgy coordinator has played a central role in the organisation of every single whole school mass. Not only that, Mr McLaughlin was one of the lead teachers in the launching and continuing evolution of the Kairos Retreat Programme, through which many pupils have benefited. Mr McLaughlin, I consider you not only a wonderful colleague, but a dear friend. You have personally supported me throughout my time in the college like a big brother, and you will be sorely missed. I wish you the very best in a well-deserved retirement, and I look forward to catching up with you in the near future. Thank you for everything that you have done for us as a school community. Best wishes and God bless. Hello. I just wanted to say uh, just a goodbye. I feel a bit like the Queen here recording my Christmas message in advance. Just to say, I've been teaching for nearly 35 years and more than half of that I've spent at St Aloysius. And when I started here, I knew I would finish my career here because it was such a great community that I knew I would never leave it. And for all my friends uh, among the janitors and the cleaners and the ref staff and the admin workers 
and the teachers and all the boys and girls that I've taught over the years. It's been wonderful to be part of such a faithful and happy family. And I think if one the lockdowns taught us anything, it's taught us that we will never replace human interaction and human relationships. And I suppose every Christmas we're always looking for the next gadget or the newest gadget or whatever. And I think this Christmas, a hug from family members and just to be together is probably what most of us would like more than anything. And I suppose that's the real meaning of Christmas. And the good news with the vaccine being here, I suppose things are going to get better. And I always used to think the great words of Martin Luther King, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And so to everybody in St. Aloysius, I would just like to say thank you for making me so welcome and for nearly two decades of happiness. And so I'd just like to say goodbye, good luck and God bless. Happy Christmas. And I would also now like to say a massive thank you to Mrs. Kelly, who has helped so many of you on a one-to-one -one basis with your studies and with your learning. Mrs. Kane has been here an incredible 26 years, and we're going to welcome Mrs. Bastian to say a few words about her. So Maureen has been at the college for 26 years. There is no way I can do justice to that in two to three minutes. So I've chosen a couple of words to describe Maureen, and the first two words are capable and conscientious. Maureen is very, very good at her job and she provides excellent support to the pupils she works with. She is extremely reliable and I know that once something has been passed to her, I can relax and she'll get it done or she'll get it sorted. And that includes everything from the pupils she works with to timetables to sorting out photocopier and the computerised screeners that, that we have um, and the formats that keep changing. As capable and conscientious as she is, she is equally self-deprecating. Any attempt to praise or thank her will always be dismissed and usually with a roll of the eyes. But remember, in order to support a pupil we had who lost her sight, Maureen learned to convert all her schoolwork to Braille and Maureen did that for a few years in support of that pupil. Working day in and day out with people, you really get to know them. We often spend more time in the day with our colleagues than we do with our families. And Maureen has been an absolute joy to work with. She has a very deep faith in her way of proceeding is always to bring everything back to God. And she's been a great role model for me in that respect. We've also all benefited from the laughter she brings to our departmental activities on a daily basis. I am going to miss Maureen so much, but I know that our friendship will continue. It's time for Maureen to enjoy some time for herself and for her wonderful family and her seven grandchildren. So Maureen, on behalf of everyone, I thank you for everything you have done and I wish you a long future of good health, love and happiness. Firstly, I would like to put the record straight. It is early retirement, very early. <laughs> I have had 26 wonderful years at the college and been fortunate enough to have brought my four children through the school. So I would like to thank everyone who taught and persevered and helped them out. I started over in St Francis and Merle in the kindergarten. And that was when St Aloysius merged with St Francis. I was a couple of years over there and then we moved to the new junior school where I worked for many years there. Then, reluctantly, I have to say, I was told I had to move up to 12 years ago to the senior school with a pupil named Natalie. It was a privilege to have worked with Natalie and we had some epic times travelling uh, by train through to the Royal Blind School in Edinburgh and learning the Braille together. And we got up to a lot of mischief. <laughs> I was lucky enough also to have helped with Lourdes pilgrimage for 10, 10 years 
Um, we watched the young students care for the disabled children with kindness, care, compassion, and lots of energy and laughter. And it was a true privilege to have seen that. I would like to thank all my colleagues and all the many great friends that have made over the years. And I could not have wished for a better friend and line manager than Lynn, who is truly awesome. Many thanks for making my time here so special. Normally, we would actually be down in St Aloysius Church celebrating our Christmas carol service. This year, because we live in strange times, I'm actually talking to you from the hall of the main school. However, you will notice that behind me are two of the most iconic symbols that we have in college at the moment. First to the Christmas tree. Look to the top of the Christmas tree and see the star. See the lights gleaming out. And then look below and see the crib. All the dramatis personae of the birth revealed to us. Every day I climb up Hill Street and I look through the door with the lights out to the Christmas tree with the light shining in the darkness. I look at the crib as I walk past and go up the stairs to my office and it gives me hope. And I do have hope, despite the fact that we have uh, gone through and continue to go through difficult times. We live in the midst of a pandemic. But as Christians and as members of this school community, we've shown this last term how we can all have hope, how we can live together, how we can build on our shared strengths and joys, how we can celebrate the consolations rather than the desolations. And so in talking to you at the start of this carol service, I want to say thank you. Whether you are a student, whether you are a pupil, whether you are a member of staff, whether you're a parent, because together we have actually had a very special term, a term in which in many ways we've been grown closer together and we have focused on what really matters and what is really important. There have been Christmases in the past, where the world has been in an uncertain place. Think of the dawn of the First World War. Think of the Christmases through the Second World War. Think of Christmases in worlds where there is conflict and hostility. And I want to think particularly of a Christmas in 1928, when the then Dean of King's College, Cambridge, Eric Milner Wright, was looking at an uncertain world. And he wrote these words, which I want to share with you today. Words that begin every service of nine lessons and carols from King's Cambridge. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide, our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in an angel. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of his disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth, goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially here in Glasgow. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lowly and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with him who, with the Lord Jesus, we are one for evermore. I hope you will enjoy a blessed, hopeful and restful Christmas. God bless. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. 
Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. These words, sung by Judy Garland in 1943, are perhaps more poignant now than at any time in the last 70 years. How many of us would have thought, back in January, that a wartime Christmas song would be so appropriate 12 short months later, as we find ourselves in the midst of a national crisis? The war was the last time that so many families spent the festive season apart, when being together is what Christmas is really all about. Like those war years, this year has been a challenge. It's been difficult, but there are so many things we can be grateful for. Every one of us should be extremely proud for embodying our college motto, Ad Majorum Dei Gloria and living the past year as men and women for others. We've collected for food banks, donated toys to those less fortunate, collected unused textbooks to be sent to schools in developing nations, staged charity football matches, cycled to Lapland, worn pink and yellow, and even designed our own college masks. Simply put, we have striven for the magis, doing more for Christ, and in turn, more for others. As we enter our final Advent week, and our thoughts turn firmly towards Christmas, we do so only too aware that it will not be a normal celebration. While we'll miss the parties and carol services, the shopping and the pantomimes, we are given an opportunity to spend more time with those we hold dearest, and cherish the moments that truly matter. For those of us in S4 to S6, we know how much our prelims really matter this year. But don't forget to take some time away from the books, to enjoy the company of your family, get some rest, and return in January confident, refreshed, and ready to take each exam in your stride. I wish each and every one of you the very best of luck. So until 2021, which we all hope will herald a return to normality, I want to wish you a happy, holy and peaceful Christmas. Before I pass over to Hamza, I'd like to leave you with a final thought. Someday soon, we all will be together, if the fates allow. Until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow. So have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all managing to stay safe and looking forward to the festive holidays fast approaching. Echoing Scarlett's advice, whether you'll be studying for prelims or not, it's still important to take time and recharge during your break spending time with family if you can, and thinking of what you're grateful for this year. Before the term ends, I think it's important to deeply acknowledge what we've achieved as a community since August. Thank you to everybody who has supported the school's food bank collections. Christmas is a time for giving, not just receiving, and now more than ever, it's important to help those in need. We showed our support for breast cancer awareness by wearing pink, and for the charity funding Neuro through purchasing school face masks designed by our very own S5s. They look absolutely great and are still available for purchase. In November, boys took part in Movember where they grew out their moustache, or at least tried to, to raise money for men's health. We've certainly shown our charitable side this year, so let's keep it up and enter the new year with our same drive and determination, no matter our circumstances. I'm sure we would all like to look back on this time, not remembering how difficult we found it, but what we accomplished with perseverance. During the holidays, remember to spend time with family, in person or electronically, and stay safe throughout the festive period. It's also important to take time and reflect personally on how you've spent the past year as well as make goals for the year ahead. Now we will begin our end of term Christmas service, 
but is a more memorable occasion this year as we are joined not only by pupils and staff in the college, but also by our parents and friends who join us virtually today for this important celebration, marking the end of a tough but successful year. So please sit back, relax, and let today's hymns, readings, and prayers uplift you and fill you with expectant hope of the Christ child coming into your hearts and homes. Let us begin with the opening hymn, Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal David City stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. That mother mold, Jesus Christ, her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of and he shelters our stable, and his cradle was our stock. With the poor and mean and lowly, lived on earth our Saviour only. Good morning everyone and welcome to our Christmas service. Today we get ready to hear again the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see all that has come to pass, and what he comes to adore the child lying in his mother's arms. Today let us hear again about the loving purposes of God to save us all, and let us make our school and our homes ring with our carols of praise. Today we pray for the needs of God's whole world, for an end to the pandemic, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and fellowship within God's people. Let us at this time remember the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in mind and body, and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who have not felt the loving kindness of God. Lastly, let us thank God and rejoice in our faith. The Word made flesh comes to us again this year, and in the manger at Bethlehem bringing us peace, comfort and joy. Let us now listen to God's word. Almighty God, you, your incarnate word, born for us today in Bethlehem, fills us with the new light he brought into the world. Let the light of faith in our hearts shine through all that we do and say. Give us a safe and happy holiday with all our friends and family. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flock during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone round them. They were terrified. The angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I'll bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great crowd of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favour. Now when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. The word of the Lord. Sun and night. reading from John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through, through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men. A light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. The word was the true light that enlightens all men, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him, who was born not out of human stock or urge of the flesh, or will of man, but of God himself. The word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God our Father, this morning we eagerly greet the birth of Jesus, our brother and saviour. He is the day star from on high, the light bearer who brings the dawn to us who wait patiently for his coming. Lord, hear us. Father, bless on this holy day the church all over the world. May she light afresh in people's hearts the lamps of hope and peace. Lord, hear us. Your son has... Your Son has come to us in the fullness of time. Let those who wait for him recognise his coming. Lord, hear us. His birth bound heaven to earth in harmony and peace. Establish that same peace among nations and people of today. Lord, hear us. With Mary and Joseph, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus. You may welcome them as Jesus did. Lord, hear us. Let us now pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen.